Lloyd, the son of Baron Arcos Frontera, gazed out over the picturesque county of Frontera, his family's legacy and responsibility. He had a heavy burden to bear, for he was not truly Lloyd, but a soul transported from future Korea into this unfamiliar world. His mission, along with his companion, the resolute Javier Asrahan, was to repay the massive debt left behind by his father, who had fallen victim to a treacherous scam orchestrated by his own knight. As a civil engineer from the 21st century, Lloyd harnessed his modern knowledge to exploit the remarkable skills of his loyal knight Javier, a master of the future sword arts. Together, they undertook various tasks, from digging channels for the houses they were contracted to build, to the most crucial endeavor of all, slicing a colossal caterpillar turd into uniform sections. On a vast expanse of empty green land, the two of them stood with four familiar summons, eager to witness Lloyd's grand plan. As Lloyd's shovel made contact with the earth, he activated a skill that transformed the barren landscape into a vibrant 3D map. His vision was clear. High-rise buildings would rise from this very land, turning the world upside down. With a hearty laugh that reverberated across the empty expanse, Lloyd called out to his companion with blue hair, Javier. It's all about the money, my friend, he exclaimed, the promise of riches dancing in his eyes. Javier looked at Lloyd, a hint of concern in his gaze, and asked, Have you finally lost it? Years ago, when this extraordinary journey began, Suho Kim had received an unexpected notification from a mysterious system. It informed him that he had been chosen to have a random wish granted by the Absolute. As the system congratulated him, Suho Kim suddenly found himself in a new body, bewildered and disoriented. The system added that he was now a character in Night of Blood and Iron, a novel Suho had read the night before. Confusion swirled within him. Was he in a different world? If so, why was he lying flat on a dirt road? His attempt to stand up was met with a bone-chilling coldness, and his jaw popped out of place. The notification appeared again, explaining that his jaw had shifted from sleeping on the cold ground. Annoyed, Suho Kim slapped the notification away, muttering that it was getting on his nerves. He couldn't help but think of the character he had overtaken in the story, abandoned on the ground. Suddenly, a man approached, claiming to have been searching for Suho Kim all night. This man was none other than the protagonist of Night of Blood and Iron. Suho Kim's mind raced with thoughts of the novels he had read, wondering if he had truly become part of a different world. Javier Asrahan, who Suho Kim now knew had a reputation as a renowned swordsman in the book, had humble beginnings as an unknown knight working for the country Lord Arcos Frontera. In this part of the story, Suho Kim was aware that Javier served as Lord Arcos' son's bodyguard. Suho Kim couldn't help but panic, realizing that he had taken over the body of Lloyd Frontera, the son of Lord Arcos. Looking at Lloyd, Javier remarked, I've never called you a hooligan before, but it's good that you're aware now. The system chimed in to notify Lloyd that Javier seemed to be in a good mood. Lloyd snapped back, telling the system to be quiet, and couldn't help but notice the mischievous grin on Javier's face. Returning to his usual demeanor, Javier began to kindle a fire and asked Lloyd if he remembered how he ended up in such a state. Lloyd, with a different soul inhabiting his body, had no recollection of what had happened. Javier explained that Lloyd had started drinking in the afternoon, got drunk, wreaked havoc in the pub, and then passed out on his way back to the manor. Lloyd considered the situation. He realized that he might be seen as a hooligan, but as Lord Arcos's son, his father would be devastated if he were found dead on the roadside with his jaw dislocated. It dawned on Lloyd how cynically Javier mocked him. Lloyd couldn't help but wish for the warmth of the traditional Korean heated flooring system beneath him. As Javier prepared to leave to report the incident to Lord Arcos, Lloyd stopped him. He confirmed that their family was drowning in debt at this point. Alone in his room, Lloyd reflected on his knowledge of the story. The night before, he had read the final chapter of the web novel and he knew all too well what happened to Lloyd at the beginning of the story. The Baron Arcos and his Baroness had fallen prey to an evil conman, losing all their land and fortune. In the end, they had taken their own lives. Lloyd, their son, had become a beggar, drowning his sorrows in alcohol, and ultimately met a grim fate coughing up blood and dying. Lloyd's anger flared as he wondered aloud what the point of being an aristocrat was if it led to such a miserable life reminiscent of his previous existence in Korea. He couldn't help but ponder what kind of wish he had made to the absolute entity that had placed him in this doomed body. The next day, at the front of the county, Lloyd's mother, Marbella Frontera, walked with Javier as they checked up on Lloyd. As Marbella scolded him for the destruction he had caused at the pub the previous night, 
Suho Kim, the actual soul inside Lloyd's body, struggled to reconcile the unfamiliar memories and current situation. His mother demanded that he go to the pub again and apologize for the mess created by the body he now inhabited. This new Lloyd was different, and he needed to rectify the actions of the previous night. Marbella and Javier were both surprised and deeply confused by Lloyd's willingness to do so. A little later that day, escorted by Javier, Lloyd made his way to the pub. As they walked, people on the road visibly feared him. Some cowered in corners while others hastily shut their doors or fled from his presence. The system appeared, reminding Lloyd that the villagers absolutely detested him, a fact he was well aware of. He questioned why Javier was following him, and Javier explained that Lord Arcos had ordered him to escort Lloyd to prevent a repeat of the previous night's incident. It was for the villagers' protection to ensure that Lloyd wouldn't harm them. Lloyd realized that the first step was to shed the scumbag image he had acquired. By doing so, he might at least secure some food when he inevitably became a beggar. He contemplated further that if he could clear his family's debt before that fate befell him, he could lead a peaceful life as the heir to a country baron, enjoying comfort into old age. Turning to the system, he asked if there was a cheat code or skill he could use. To his surprise, he did possess a skill. Human scum. A passive ability that caused others to furrow their brows and perceive him as a rowdy drunkard when activated. Lloyd playfully waved the system window like a madman in front of Javier, who remained unaware of the skill's activation. Inside the pub, Lloyd finally grasped the extent of the mess he had caused. He attempted to genuinely apologize to the pub's owner, but the owner was still too frightened and remained on high alert. Lloyd realized that this was likely the reaction when a scumbag suddenly tried to be kind. He changed his demeanor, becoming ruder, and offered another apology. This time, the pub's owner wasn't as alarmed, and Lloyd left, heading back home. As he walked past a bridge, Lloyd asked Javier why he didn't seem pleased, even after Lloyd's apology. Javier explained that everything Lloyd had destroyed the previous night was likely the cause of his subdued demeanor. Lloyd stood outside the pub, realizing that the furniture and decorations he had destroyed were purchased with the hard-earned money of the pub owner. He understood that a simple apology might not be enough to satisfy the man. Additionally, the owner had been looking after his sick mother after the harsh winter, which compounded the difficulty of the situation. Javier urged Lloyd to imagine the hardships the pub owner had endured. Lloyd felt annoyed, well aware of his family's crippling debt. Then, a moment of realization washed over him. He thought about Andal floors, a luxury he was familiar with from his previous life, but absent in this world. If he could construct and sell them, he could settle the Baron's debts. The hooligan Lloyd Frontera would never have dreamt of such an opportunity. Suho Kim, who had moved to this world and now resided as Lloyd, could tap into the knowledge he had gained during his previous life. With a major in civil engineering and experience as a military engineer, he had even built a house by himself. Furthermore, he had toiled day and night at construction sites. Lloyd now saw the path to financial salvation. He instructed Javier to return to the pub to initiate his first order. Javier was puzzled, wondering why they would return to the pub. Just then, a notification appeared, signaling that Lloyd's true journey had begun. It introduced the RP system, which allowed him to earn points by improving relationships with key characters. Lloyd realized there was no immediate instruction on how to use it. His only option was to follow the system's guidance. Examining Javier's approval rating, Lloyd noted that it stood at minus 30 surprising given his previous behavior. In an attempt to improve their relationship, he tried to compliment Javier's appearance, suggesting that he looked very handsome. However, this effort backfired, decreasing the approval rating by one point. Undeterred by his initial failure, Lloyd headed back to the pub. There, he presented the owner with a contract, proposing that he would serve as the builder and the owner would be the purchaser. The construction fees would cover the damages he had caused. Lloyd asked the owner to sign the contract, the man remained suspicious. In a calculated move, the pub owner activated a skill called Stonewall Heart. Though he had hoped to avoid using it, he saw no other option. Drawing on his hooligan image, Lloyd intimidated the pub owner into signing the contract, who complied out of fear. The system couldn't help but mock Lloyd, deeming him absolute garbage as the contract was sealed. Lloyd couldn't contain his excitement as he received his first order and thanked the pub owner. He assured the owner that he had made the right choice. Javier observed Lloyd's behavior with confusion, 
Noting how different he seemed from before, Lloyd began preparations to build the house. Javier called out to him, expressing concern about Lloyd's threat to the pub owner to secure the contract. He questioned whether Lloyd was coming up with new ways to cause trouble. Lloyd responded by introducing the concept of cognitive distortion, explaining that it was a tendency to believe that someone would act a certain way based on their past actions. It was a distortion caused by prejudice and negative thinking. Javier argued that his judgments were based on experience and statistics, to which Lloyd retorted that those two were rooted in the past. Javier was taken aback, wondering if Lloyd had always been such a smooth talker. As Lloyd started digging the ground, he claimed that he would make both the pub owner and his mother smile. To him, their smiles were the foundation upon which he could build his financial future. He tirelessly scooped out dirt, moved it, and packed it, repeating the process. As he finished excavating the dirt, he began constructing the frame using timber from the Baron's residence. It was to be a traditional timber frame, and he used the clay he had dug from the river to complete the walls. Lloyd soon realized the physical toll on his body. He had undertaken this laborious task alone, and had pushed himself to exhaustion. Javier couldn't resist mocking him, suggesting it wasn't much of an accomplishment. Lloyd explained that it had taken him a week to complete the building. As Lloyd tried to finish the construction, Javier wondered if Lloyd's true intent was to build something for the pub owner. He could see Lloyd trembling from fatigue after overworking for a week. As Lloyd struggled to swing an axe due to his weakened state, he was about to fall, but Javier caught him. Deciding to lend a helping hand, Javier asked for the measurements of the wood he needed to cut which Lloyd explained in a confused manner. Javier skillfully threw logs in the air, swung the axe, and expertly crafted the wood slabs that Lloyd needed. It became clear that Javier possessed remarkable skills, showcasing his potential to become a master swordsman. Impressed by Javier's abilities, Lloyd tapped him on the shoulder and suggested that when he was done, Javier could help with the digging. Javier was furious as he believed Lloyd had the audacity to give him more work. He thought of Lloyd as a hopeless man. Meanwhile, a notification appeared for Lloyd, indicating that Javier regretted his decision to help. With the system's guidance, Lloyd realized that Javier was curious about how he would manage to deceive the pub owner. To find out, Javier decided to assist with digging the excavation in the house to create a channel for the hot air that would heat the floor. As the construction neared completion, Lloyd cheered happily. He even added a logo for his construction brand within the house. Playfully provoking Javier, he inquired about the con he had been cooking for the pub owner with the wood in the fire pit and the hot air circulating through the channel. They headed to the chimney where the pub owner's mother lay happily on the floor, her stiff joints feeling remarkably relaxed. The pub owner himself was astounded by what Lloyd had accomplished, as it seemed almost like magic to the people in that world. The pub owner expressed his gratitude, and Javier was shocked to witness Lloyd fulfilling his promise to make them both smile. He had never thought that Lloyd Frontera would undertake such an act, but somehow Lloyd had made it happen. Seeing the smiles on the faces of the two people in front of him, Javier couldn't help but smile as well. His approval rating increased by two points, a fact that Lloyd noticed with a self-satisfied grin. He teased Javier, declaring that he wasn't a total garbage after all, though Javier continued to deny it. Despite the success with the house, Lloyd had incurred a loss due to the price of the timber he had used. Nevertheless, he now had a model house to showcase to potential customers. A few days later, crowds gathered at the site, eager to see the house. Lloyd watched over them, and when a person exited the house, they expressed amazement at how warm the floor was, claiming it could melt them. Lloyd offered them construction plans and even extended a 10% discount. However, the system informed Lloyd that the villagers didn't trust him. To overcome this obstacle, Lloyd resorted to his hooligan image, attempting to intimidate the villagers. Just as he did so, someone called out to him. His father, Baron Arcos Frontera, had arrived, questioning what he thought he was doing at the front of his manor. Lloyd felt nervous, anticipating that his father might reprimand him. Lloyd had dinner with his father, Baron Arcos Frontera. He had managed to avoid talking to his father until then. But Lord Arcos inquired about what he was up to this time. Lloyd attempted to be as rude as possible, explaining that the pub owner had ordered an Ondal room so he had built one. As Lloyd was about to leave, his father reassured him not to worry about the family's debt. He promised to resolve their financial troubles soon, and advised Lloyd not to get too involved. Lloyd's thoughts drifted back to his life in the real world, where he had heard similar promises from his father. He knew that it wasn't enough, and he couldn't accept mere words. As he left the dinner room, he told Lord Arcos not to give up, 
promising that he wouldn't either. He wished he could have said the same thing to his father a few years ago. Thinking about his construction order, which now totaled 89 houses, and the half of the money he had received, Lloyd intended to enter the Baron's office. To his surprise, when he arrived, they didn't acknowledge him as the son of the Baron. Instead, they pressured Lord Arcos to repay the loan, claiming that five days had passed since the agreed-upon date. They even threatened to take action themselves. Lloyd seized the opportunity and adopted a terrifying smile, as if he had devised something nefarious. The previous night, he had received RP points from his improving relationship with Javier and discovered that he could invest them to acquire abilities. He taunted the system for providing this information, causing it to temporarily shut down. When the system scanned Lloyd, it detected several skills from his past life, including soil mechanics, hydraulics, structural mechanics, water supply, sewage theory, steel structure design, concrete design, advanced design programming, and more. The system mockingly noted that he knew more than he appeared to. It displayed available skills based on his existing knowledge, and with a mere pointer, Lloyd selected the skills. One of the acquired skills was basic survey, which allowed Lloyd's eyes to glow green as he looked out of the window, enabling him to map the manor's yard without the need for GPS. Another skill was basic design, allowing him to draw something on a window that only he could see. Lloyd realized that moving forward would be much easier with these abilities, but he also recognized that Javier alone wouldn't be enough to handle all the construction. He pondered the idea of summoning heavy machinery with his knowledge, when suddenly the system appeared saying that there was something Lloyd wanted. Lloyd contemplated how he might obtain a mythical creature capable of functioning like heavy machinery through the random summon game. To do so, he needed to accumulate more RP points. His current total was a mere one point, while the first summon required 50 points. Setting his mind on the task, Lloyd realized that he needed to acquire more RP points. Just then, the overweight moneylender slammed the table in front of Lord Arcos, suggesting that if the Lord lacked funds, he could sell the Baroness and her ladies to a certain place for a hefty sum of gold. Lord Arcos was shocked by the audacious proposal. Lloyd appeared behind the fat man, chiding him for his lack of manners despite being a lender. He asked for a warrant, citing the Empire's law that allowed all nobles to protect their interests. Entering the residence of a noble family without a warrant was considered trespassing. Lloyd then called upon Javier to join them and commanded him to cut the moneylender's arms as trespassers. Although they attempted to argue, Lloyd remained calm. Javier drew his sword, and the moneylenders fled, shouting nonsense. Lord Arco scolded Lloyd for his actions, but Lloyd simply dropped a bag of gold coins, explaining that it was the money he had collected from the house orders. Lord Arcos assumed that Lloyd had extorted money from the villagers, but Javier supported Lloyd, ensuring that he would fulfill his orders. With that, Lord Arcos agreed not to interfere with Lloyd's business any further. As they concluded their dealings, both Lloyd and Javier requested to leave the hall. Cynically, Javier asked Lloyd where he had learned of such a law. Lloyd claimed he had picked it up somewhere, but in reality, he had learned it from reading the book detailing the Baron and Baroness's tragic fate. In the story, after the Baron and Baroness committed suicide, Javier, who was left without a master to serve, encountered the two lone lenders. It was then that he uttered the words, off with their head after mentioning the law, a scene that filled Lloyd with a sense of satisfaction. As he expected, a notification appeared, indicating that the Baron's approval rating had increased by six, awarding Lloyd 60 RP points. That night, as the moon cast its soft glow over the training yard, Lloyd ventured forth, ensuring he was hidden from prying eyes. With a hushed tone, he called upon the mysterious system to reveal the summoning game. His heart raced with anticipation as he tapped the screen, and suddenly, a magical circle resembling intricate gears materialized before him. His eyes widened in awe at the spectacle, but the magic circle, though grand in appearance, turned out to be quite minuscule. As he activated it, a cacophony of noise erupted, taking him aback. From the magical portal emerged an unexpected guest, a tiny, furry hamster. Lloyd's expression fell, disappointment evident on his face. Meanwhile, the hamster, a creature named Podong, gazed up at him with innocent, hopeful eyes, seeking approval from its master. With a sigh, Lloyd muttered, It's a dot, shaking his head in disbelief. He allowed the hamster to tumble to the ground, its tiny form unfazed by the abrupt landing. As he turned to leave Podong behind, a twinge of guilt gnawed at Lloyd's conscience. He couldn't help but pause, bending down to speak to the tiny creature. Maybe I can help you. 
he murmured. Podong, seemingly understanding, perked up and made a series of inquisitive squeaks. Lloyd couldn't help but chuckle. You want to shoot acorns, pew pew or something? He asked, a hint of amusement in his voice. To Lloyd's surprise, Podong didn't respond verbally. Instead, the hamster regurgitated a set of user manuals, its way of communicating. Lloyd picked them up, and the manuals revealed that Podong was, in fact, an adorable hamster. The instructions were clear. Give Podong lots of love and feed it one of the enclosed sunflower seeds to witness a transformation. The manuals explained further that the red sunflower seeds would cause Podong to grow to gigantic proportions, while the blue ones would make it shrink back. Intrigued, Lloyd decided to test the red seed's effects. He held the seed out to Podong, who eagerly nibbled it. To Lloyd's astonishment, the hamster began to grow rapidly, expanding until it was as tall as a tree. In his amazement, Podong knocked Lloyd off his feet, sending him sprawling to the ground. Podong, now a colossal creature standing over thirty feet tall, wore a mischievous grin on its face. Its innocent demeanor had vanished, replaced by a smug expression. Podong didn't stop at growing in size. It proceeded to display its newfound skills. First, it demonstrated its digging prowess, starting at level one, with dirt rolling off its massive form. Then it showcased its cheek pockets at level one, efficiently storing dirt in its mouth and redistributing it. Despite being soaked in saliva, Lloyd's eyes sparkled with wonder and curiosity as he observed Podong's abilities. He now possessed a powerful asset in the form of Pota, but he couldn't help but worry about the practicality of having such a massive creature by his side. The thought of others seeing it filled him with unease. Lloyd racked his brain for an excuse to justify Pata's presence. He decided he would bring a book on summoning with him, claiming to be a master summoner in the making. It might provide some cover for his unusual companion. With that concern addressed, Lloyd shifted his focus to the labor aspect of his project. Gathering his family members, he initiated a meeting to instill the importance of safety. The thirty soldiers of Fronteras Barony appeared bewildered, some still rubbing sleep from their eyes. Lloyd couldn't help but feel frustrated at the thought that these soldiers were being paid for minimal effort, while the Baron's debt continued to mount. He recalled his own time in the army, where he had spent more hours digging and weeding than actual training. With a sweeping gesture, he directed their attention toward a pile of clay, which he falsely claimed to have excavated the previous night. In reality, it was Podong who had done the digging. Lloyd rallied his troops, emphasizing their duty to contribute to the estate's renaissance and Ondal construction business. He urged them to move the clay to the construction site, a collective effort that would benefit both the people and the barony. As the soldiers began to mobilize, Lloyd couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. The soldiers' faces reflected their dejection as they reluctantly followed Lloyd's orders. It was precisely what Lloyd had expected. Amid the uneasy atmosphere, a senior soldier approached Lloyd, his expression one of inquiry. What are you ordering my soldiers to do? The senior soldier questioned, confirming Lloyd's anticipation of a confrontation. Lloyd took a deep breath before explaining the hierarchy of the three knights in the Baron's land. At the pinnacle was Neumann, the highest-ranking knight, the very man confronting him. Just below Newman stood Bayern and the protagonist of the novel, Javier Asrahan. At the outset of the story, as the estate fell into ruin, Javier and Bayern remained loyal to the Baron until the bitter end. However, Newman was the first to betray the Baron, selling crucial information to con men and fleeing, leaving behind a staggering debt. Lloyd had a scheme in mind, one that involved Newman, the foremost knight in these lands. To provoke him further, Lloyd casually remarked, I told him to dig dirt. I am his commander, after all. Newman's anger simmered just beneath the surface, but Lloyd knew the truth. It wasn't because of the menial task he had assigned. Rather, it was the fact that Lloyd was close to making money that could potentially alleviate his family's debt. Lloyd emphasized that he had Lord Arco's permission, but Newman remained skeptical suggesting that Lloyd might be attempting to deceive the Lord. Newman's prior experiences with Lloyd didn't work in the young man's favor. With a nonchalant shrug, Lloyd casually commented, Sounds about right. Growing increasingly furious, Newman's face contorted with anger to the point where the vein on his forehead appeared ready to explode. Lloyd silently noted how fragile Newman was, imagining that if he were a gamer, his fingers would be dancing across the keyboard in rage. Seeking to further infuriate Newman, Lloyd impulsively scooped up a shovel's worth of dirt and flung it into the knight's face. The action sent shockwaves through the gathered soldiers, even as the Baron's son, 
Lloyd knew that a single strike from a knight like Newman could end his life. However, he remained undeterred, pointing the shovel toward Newman's face, challenging him to a duel. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out Ara Ara Simp who commented, Tough to say what my favorite man was genre is. Depends on my mood. I like action, survival, mystery, and time travel the most on our damn reincarnation video. Thanks for commenting. Meanwhile, back at the manor, Javier approached Lloyd with a mix of incredulity and anger. Are you really confident about fighting Numan? He asked, his voice tinged with frustration. Lloyd, with a hint of mockery in his tone, replied, Of course not. He's a low-level sword expert knight skilled in using the mana heart skill. How could I? A nobody challenge him. Javier seethed with anger, dangerously close to drawing his sword and confronting Lloyd. He wondered if Lloyd had truly learned from his past actions. However, just as he was about to react, Lloyd abruptly threw dirt into Newman's face and challenged him to a duel. Javier couldn't help but think that Lloyd was reverting to his old hooligan ways. He found it all too calculated how Lloyd had requested the Baron's intervention to separate them and had designated Sir Bairn as a substitute overseer to supervise the soldier's work. Lloyd's intentions remained a mystery to Javier and he longed to take his sword and cut Lloyd down for his audacity. The tension between Lloyd and Javier lingered in the air as they stood facing each other. Lloyd broke the silence, his voice carrying an unexpected request. Teach me how to use a sword, he said. Javier's eyes widened in disbelief, and he responded with blatant refusal. My job is to watch you, not to teach you, he retorted sharply. He couldn't hide his contempt for Lloyd, describing him as scum and human trash. He feared that if someone like Lloyd were to learn swordsmanship, it would endanger those around him even more. Lloyd, unfazed by Javier's harsh words, suggested with a wry smile, maybe you should tone it down a bit. Javier remained resolute in his decision not to teach Lloyd. I have no intention of teaching you, he declared firmly. Lloyd, however, wasn't ready to give up. He made a surprising offer to Javier, one that caught the seasoned knight off guard. What if I could cure your insomnia? He proposed. Javier's expression shifted from defiance to confusion. He hadn't shared his struggle with insomnia with anyone, and he wondered how Lloyd had become privy to such personal information. Lloyd, still smirking, revealed his knowledge of Javier's condition, citing details from the book he had read. In the novel, Javier's insomnia stemmed from his transition from a high-level sword expert to a swordmaster, where his heightened senses left him unable to sleep. Lloyd explained, It's a side effect of being a swordmaster. You're on the verge of transitioning from human to superhuman. Your senses sharpen to the point where sleep becomes elusive. Javier realized that there was no way Lloyd could have known this, especially in the remote backwoods where they resided. With a skeptical look, he inquired, Do we have a deal? Javier couldn't hide his insomnia, and he reluctantly agreed to give it a try, all while looking down on Lloyd. Convinced that the young man would fail, he scoffed, remarking, I'm sure you'll fail. There's no remedy I haven't tried. From sleep cognition therapy to herbs, aromatherapy, exercise, and even Eastern medicine. Amused by Javier's arrogance, Lloyd couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. He had Javier all figured out, including how to cure his insomnia. In the book, Javier had finally found sleep by listening to a magic spell. Lloyd had a different plan. With a wicked smile, Lloyd claimed, Your swordsmanship will be mine. The next day, Javier, well rested after a night of peaceful sleep, instructed Lloyd to run 50 laps around the perimeter. Nervousness gripped him as he watched Lloyd, unsure of how the young man would react. However, to Javier's surprise, Lloyd didn't complain. He began running with his weak physique, starting slowly but steadily. During the first lap, Lloyd pestered Javier, expressing his desire to learn sword skills. With each lap, his determination grew, and he didn't stop running. His ultimate motivation was to prove Javier wrong. On the next lap, Lloyd addressed Javier, claiming he knew exactly what the knight was thinking. He understood that Javier had assumed he wouldn't comply and believed that Lloyd lacked the dedication to learn his swordsmanship. Javier's expectations were that Lloyd would refuse the challenge, but Lloyd was determined to prove him wrong and earn the opportunity to be taught by the skilled knight. As Lloyd continued to run laps around the perimeter, he couldn't help but relish the mental victory he was achieving over Javier. He reveled in the thought that he was bullying the skilled knight into doing exactly what he wanted, and it brought a hysterical laugh bubbling up inside his head. The sense of triumph was exhilarating. In truth, Lloyd found the task physically challenging, and he couldn't deny that it was hard work. However, compared to his past struggles in Korea, 
where he had lived in isolation and worked relentlessly to survive. Running 50 laps felt like a walk in the park. Back then, he had to carry bricks up a four-story building and load and unload delivery trucks just to avoid starving. The hope for a better future had kept him going during those dark days. Now, as he ran with determination and a hint of a smile, he couldn't help but reflect on how much his life had changed. Running laps was a small price to pay for the opportunities and privileges he now enjoyed. Meanwhile, back at the manor in the Baron's office, Lord Arco expressed his disbelief over Lloyd's disrespect towards Newman, who had protected their family for generations. Lord Arco had believed that Lloyd had finally come to his senses, but recent events suggested otherwise. He pondered his next move and considered intervening to stop the duel. Lord Arco, however, didn't want to harm Lloyd, still recognizing him as his heir. He requested Newman not to be overly harsh during the duel, urging him to pull back his punches and help Lloyd regain his senses. Unbeknownst to Lord Arco, Newman had darker plans. Duels didn't always go as planned, and he saw an opportunity to eliminate Lloyd. If he cut off Lloyd's head and killed him, he could frame it as a tragic accident. Then he could deal with the Baron and Baroness, disguising their deaths as suicide. With his schemes in motion, Newman envisioned leaving the tiny village behind and venturing into a larger world, thanks to the chaos Lloyd had unknowingly stirred. A month later, on the county training ground, the day of the battle finally arrived, setting the stage for a confrontation that had been brewing for some time. Nervous tension hung in the air as the Baron, Baroness, Javier, and Sir Bairn gathered to witness the upcoming duel. All eyes were fixed on the dueling ground, awaiting the clash between Lloyd and Neumann. The uncertainty of the outcome left them on edge. Neumann, with a shovel in hand, looked every bit the experienced knight ready for battle. Lloyd, on the other hand, appeared arrogant. The knights and villagers exchanged puzzled glances. They couldn't fathom why Lloyd was wielding a shovel in a sword fight, a decision that clearly irritated Newman. It was then revealed that Lloyd had sought out the village blacksmith for a solid iron shovel specifically for this battle against Newman. Lord Arco couldn't help but think that Lloyd was treating the duel as a joke, given his unconventional behavior. However, Javier had a different perspective. He had observed Lloyd's dedication over the past month, with the young man silently undergoing rigorous training during the early hours, running around construction sites to teach the village engineers about Ondol, and engaging in sword practice late into the night. Javier knew that Lloyd's commitment was anything but a joke. As the duel commenced, Lord Arco watched with skepticism. Newman, eager to prove his superiority, decided not to draw his sword immediately. On the opposite side, Lloyd displayed awkward movements for someone engaging in a sword battle, appearing more lackluster than ready. His choice of a shovel only added to the perplexity. Newman, fueled by anger, swung his sword at Lloyd with all his might, expecting an easy victory. To his surprise, Lloyd effortlessly deflected the strike, leaving Newman to chalk it up to luck. He tried again, believing that luck wouldn't strike twice. But once more, Lloyd deftly countered the attack. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps. Lord Arco, concerned about the escalating violence, tried to intervene but Lloyd remained unyielding. He continued to strike Newman repeatedly, embarrassing him even further. Sir Bairn and Javier exchanged worried glances, wondering if Lloyd had finally lost control. The knights tried to restrain Lloyd, grabbing hold of him and repeatedly telling him to stop. Lloyd pretended to agree, momentarily catching his breath. But then, without warning, he resumed beating Newman. Javier, watching with a mix of shock and understanding, realized that Lloyd was hitting Newman with precision targeting every vulnerable part of his body. As Lloyd's calm expression remained unchanged, Javier couldn't help but believe that Lloyd had predicted these events with an eerie sense of foresight. The duel had taken a shocking turn, leaving everyone in awe of Lloyd's unexpected strength and strategy. Fifteen days prior, Javier recalled how Lloyd had demanded that he teach him the Asrahan core technique. Lloyd's incessant nagging had tested Javier's patience. Initially, Lloyd had misunderstood, thinking Javier wanted to learn how to steal. Javier clarified that the technique involved drawing in mana from the surroundings, not just the mana conjured by the individual. Javier had kept the details of the technique a secret, as it was still unfinished. Lloyd, however, questioned how he knew about it. Lloyd revealed that Javier often talked about it in his sleep, and every time Lloyd helped him to bed with a lullaby, he overheard these mumblings. Feeling apologetic, Javier informed Lloyd that he couldn't teach him the technique because it wasn't complete, but Lloyd had other ideas. He offered to assist Javier in perfecting the Azrahan core technique. In exchange, 
Lloyd requested that Javier teach it to him. Lloyd began to explain his insights into the technique. He suggested a new approach, where Javier should focus on condensing the outside mana separately and using it around the outside of the mana heart itself, rather than trying to combine it with the internal mana. Lloyd's fresh perspective provided the breakthrough that Javier had been desperately seeking for a long time. On their first try, Javier successfully managed to create up to three circles using the technique. With further training, he believed he could achieve even more. The success not only brought Javier a sense of accomplishment, but also boosted Lloyd's approval rating by five points. With mockingly feigned disinterest, Lloyd claimed that he had nothing else to do but learn how to use the mana heart. However, he emphasized that he specifically wanted to master the absorbing aspect of the technique. Lloyd didn't seek the mana from the air, but instead wanted to harness the mana that came into contact with his body. With determination in his eyes, Lloyd believed that mastering this skill would enable him to defeat Newman. And as the duel played out, Lloyd's newfound abilities allowed him to emerge as the victor, easily surpassing his opponent and proving that his determination and unorthodox methods could indeed yield extraordinary results. Lord Arcos had finally reached his limit. He shouted at Lloyd to stop, making it clear that he would not tolerate any further insults to Sir Newman's honor. Lloyd, for a moment, ceased his actions and calmly turned to his father. He challenged Lord Arcos to check what was hidden beneath the table's cloth and decide for himself if those words were fitting for Sir Newman. Curious and taken aback, Lord Arcos lifted the cloth and found a stack of letters. He was stunned to discover that these letters were exchanges between Neumann and Tordes, the man who had defrauded Lord Arcos in a real estate deal. The letters contained information about the financial status of their land, their preferences, plans to forge real estate documents, and various other discussions. Newman was huh? equally surprised to see the letters as he had hidden them in the wall. Lloyd, <laughs> with a mischievous grin, knew that Javier would later find these letters, just as the story had foretold. Lord Arco struggled to comprehend what he was reading. Any other person might have demanded Neumann's immediate punishment, but Lord Arcos was known for his kindness, as described in the book. Lloyd proposed dealing with Newman's punishment for the night. He suggested a unique and symbolic punishment. A vicious mouse dropped onto Newman's head. If Neumann was harmed by the mouse, he would be exiled from the land. Otherwise, he would be demoted to a foot soldier and given a chance to repent. This proposal left the others, including Lord Arcos himself, puzzled. Sir Bayern, however, recognized the wisdom and generosity in Lloyd's suggestion. He saw it as a warning to others and believed it would be a fitting resolution. Eventually, Lord Arcos agreed to Lloyd's proposal and turned to Newman to ask if he had any objections. Newman, with gratitude for the mercy shown, expressed no objection. Lloyd, with a certain satisfaction, contemplated for a moment whether offering a guilty party a merciful outcome would lead them to change their ways and repent. He knew better, believing that they would only become more stubborn and crafty, seeking ways to rise once more. As Newman <laughs> grinned, thinking that Lloyd would regret his decision, Lloyd noticed the smile and remarked that it was nice to see but added ominously that it would be the last time. With a decisive gesture, Lloyd fed a red seed to Podong, who grew into a massive mouse. Podong landed squarely on Newman's head, and Lloyd announced the exile of Newman while proudly declaring himself as a summoner. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. Who is the best man with swordsman? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. The next day in the county of Frontera, Podong diligently dug out the village road, leaving Javier puzzled about what the little hamster was up to. With Podong diligently carving out a road, Lloyd couldn't hide his excitement. The once feeble soldier now resembled a proper construction worker, and Lloyd announced that the real work was about to begin. He explained that there had once been an ancient city called Rome, which had a profound admiration for roads. They used a method to create the famous Appian Way, and Lloyd intended to follow in their footsteps. The road would stretch from the Baron's Manor to the base of the Eastern Mountain, a grand undertaking that would put their land on the map. Javier couldn't help but be curious. He asked why Lloyd had suddenly acquired this knowledge, considering that he had already built a heating system and summoned a high-level creature seemingly out of nowhere. The system window appeared, noting Javier's suspicions about Lloyd's identity. Javier questioned whether Lloyd was truly his master. He warned that if he discovered Lloyd was someone else who had taken over his lord's body, he would not hesitate to use his sword. However, Lloyd calmly activated a special skill called Stubborn Insistence, claiming that he had studied when no one was looking. Javier countered by accusing Lloyd of spending his time drinking, but Lloyd retorted by asking if Javier had been watching him 24 hours a day. When Javier inquired about summoning magic, Lloyd pointed out that even a skilled mage with 20 years of training would have a hard time achieving what he had. He revealed that he had been born with the gift of summoning magic, emphasizing his unique abilities. Lloyd then abruptly changed the topic, informing Sir Bayern to oversee the roadwork in his absence. 
He mentioned that he had to go to a distant place to retrieve some money that had been stolen from the family. With that, he left with Javier, leaving behind their questions and suspicions. Meanwhile, in the small town of Ludinia, the real estate conman Tordes was feeling frustrated after losing a substantial amount of money from gambling. To his surprise, Lloyd suddenly barged into the room and introduced himself. Tordes was taken aback and asked his guard if he should kill Lloyd. Much to Tordes's astonishment, the guard refused and instead made a quick escape through the window, leaving his employer to face Lloyd alone. As Lloyd and Javier descended into the room, they were greeted by Javier, who stood ready with his sword, prepared to defend himself. Javier instructed the guard to leave and walk away, warning that if the guard refused, he would be seen as a co-conspirator. Lloyd, understanding the situation, advised the guard to do as Javier said and wait for him outside. He knew that they would try to escape through the back window. Lloyd explained the situation to Javier, revealing that in the story from the book, after Javier lost his master, Baron Frontera, he sought revenge and managed to track down the conman, Tordes, and his bodyguard. This encounter was the first time Javier had come face to face with the Dark Enchanter. Back then, he had struggled against the guard's gravitational magic. However, things were different now. Not only had Javier perfected the Asrahan technique, but he also had a triple circle mana heart, allowing him to easily nullify the gravitational magic. Seeing Javier's newfound power, the guard fled stating that his contract with Torde was no longer valid. Javier then turned his attention to Tordes, condemning him for committing fraud against a noble family and intending to cut off his leg and have him crawl to the courthouse. However, Lloyd intervened, preventing Javier from taking such extreme measures. Lloyd expressed pity for Tordes, a sentiment that surprised Javier. Inside the inn, Tordes was tied up and visibly trembling. Lloyd reassured him that everyone could be a little greedy at times. He explained that while the law was harsh, it wouldn't lead to Tordes's beheading. Lloyd then requested that Tordes hand over all of the Baron's remaining assets, which Tordes did willingly, hoping for forgiveness. But Lloyd had more in store. He presented Tordes with a contract, describing it as a normal employment contract with a paid salary. However, he revealed that 80% of Tordes's salary would be withheld as repayment for the money he had defrauded from the Frontera family. Lloyd added that, in just 520 years, Tordes would finally receive payment for all of his debt, a shocking revelation that left Tordes bewildered. Javier now understood the real reason behind Lloyd's pity and forgiveness. Lloyd had no intention of killing someone who owed him a debt. Instead, he planned to extract every last bit of repayment from Tordes for the rest of his life. Tordes, in disbelief, tried to argue that he had never seen such a shamefully unjust contract. Lloyd, unfazed, told Tordes that he couldn't force him to sign it and suggested that he take the matter to court if he disagreed. The following morning, as they rode home in a carriage, Javier mentioned that they had obtained some money from Tordes, so they wouldn't have to worry about interest for a few months. However, Lloyd had a different plan in mind. He wanted to use the money to invest in hiring more people. Currently, they only had 30 soldiers, which he considered insufficient. His concern was whether the villagers would even apply for the positions, considering his hooligan reputation. A few days later, when Lloyd put up a wanted sign, numerous villagers showed up to apply for the jobs. This surprised Lloyd, as he had assumed the villagers disliked him. Javier explained that after Lloyd delivered the Ondal system on time, took care of the traitor, and even demonstrated his summoning abilities, the villagers now considered him a trustworthy and talented man. Javier privately noted that he knew Lloyd was far from perfect, but what mattered was the villagers' opinion. One of the villagers even thanked Lloyd for the Ondal system, as it had helped their child avoid suffering from severe colds during cold spells. Lloyd felt nervous and embarrassed, as all he had initially wanted was to satisfy his greed. The villager then mentioned having a relative in the neighboring Lakono land, and inquired if Lloyd would accept an order from them as well. Lloyd realized that the moment he had been waiting for had arrived. He saw this as the first stage of his big plan, which justified building the Ondoles at a loss initially. He planned to use the travel expenses as an excuse to increase costs. Javier noticed the shifty expression on Lloyd's face and wondered about the purpose of the road leading to the mountain. Lloyd then took Javier to see the mountain and explained that soon those mountains would be stripped bare as Ondal required an astronomical amount of fuel. He intended to mine the black coal in the mountains and sell it at a huge markup. Once people got used to Ondal, there would be no turning back. He added that he would offer a small discount to the people of his land, but it would still be a significant profit. Javier couldn't help but think about how sneaky and devious Lloyd's plan was. The system alerted Lloyd to Javier's thoughts, and he explained that if they didn't do this, they wouldn't be able to repay their debts. Javier understood the necessity of the plan and realized that the previous Baron had left the black coal untouched because he was unaware of the weak bedrock and the risk of mine collapse. However, Lloyd was confident in his modern excavation technology 
and had big plans for the future. Inside the tunnel that Lloyd was designing for the mine, he was growing impatient with the time-consuming process of drawing the modeling tunnel with a laser that came from his hand. He was imagining a scenario where he could summon a hundred undead workers to speed up the work, but the system alerted him, expressing its dislike for the idea. Lloyd quickly corrected himself, thanked the system, and continued drawing the tunnel with his hand. After the incident with Newman, Lloyd had raised his approval rating with the Baron, Baroness, Javier, and Bairn, earning him 639 RP rating points. With these points, Lloyd had gone on a leveling up spree, gaining various skills. He had also completed the road using these newly acquired skills. Now, he was at the entrance of the mine, using a skill that allowed him to see up to five meters in depth to find a safe path into the mine. The problem was that digging out the path manually would take too long and the workers would tire out quickly. Podong was sick from the construction of the road and long distance jobs, and even when he recovered, he would be too big for this task. Lloyd decided to summon another creature using the gotcha summon window, as he had plenty of RP points left. Lloyd summoned a pink caterpillar but initially ignored it, causing the creature to fall face down to the ground. Lloyd speculated that the caterpillar might have a poison-related skill. However, he decided to ask Bangal, his loyal sunflower seed-eating creature, if the caterpillar could grow bigger and about its skills. A few weeks later, at the mining site, an enlarged Bangul was helping dig out and eat the dirt with her skill called Accelerated Dirt Digestion. Javier was ready to receive whatever came out of Bangul. The process involved Bangul digesting the dirt, launching steel dung, Javier cutting the steel dung into uniform lengths, and the workers creating steel segments to support the tunnel. Javier couldn't help but wonder why he, a knight and future swordmaster, was underground cutting giant snakes' turds. Lloyd made sure that no steps were missed to avoid wasting time and repeatedly pushed the tunnel further into the mine. He also realized the importance of installing an oxygen pipe to ensure the workers' safety, as they would have likely passed out without it. Javier suggested that Lloyd take a break, but Lloyd, being in charge, refused and remembered how in his previous life, many bosses had just flaunted their titles and never bothered to show up on site. He swore never to be like them. As they continued deeper into the mine, Lloyd spotted the black coal and cheered up the workers, telling them they were almost there. He thanked Bungle for her role in speeding up the process and reminded the workers of the principle of safety first. They planned to dismantle the shield once they reached the black coal lair and enlarged the mining space. However, something from underground began knocking, catching their attention and raising questions about what it might be. As the massive ant emerged from the hole in the mine, it took Lloyd by surprise, and he fell to the ground ready to defend himself. Javier swiftly slashed at the ant, and Lloyd joined in by smashing the ant's head flat to the ground. This unexpected turn of events frightened Lloyd, as it wasn't something he had read about in the book. He realized that ants didn't live alone. They lived in colonies. Other ants started swarming into the tunnel, and Lloyd knew they had to evacuate the workers to prevent the ants from attacking them. He was overwhelmed by the sheer number of ants and the potential devastation they could cause to the barony if they managed to escape the mine. Lloyd considered destroying the mine shaft to seal off the ants, but without dynamite, it was an impossible task. Javier slapped Lloyd, urging him to regain his composure and come up with a plan. Lloyd decided to confront the ants head-on and head towards the ant nest plan that seemed ridiculous to Javier, but was their best option. As they charged towards the ant colony blocking their path, the workers reported the situation in the mine to Lord Arcos. He quickly prepared to go to the tunnel to assist. Meanwhile, Javier and Lloyd ventured deeper into the nest, struggling with the hot and thin air in the tunnel. Lloyd realized that they needed to find a layer of methane gas quickly, as it could potentially save them. He explained that coal contains methane-producing bacteria, creating pockets of methane gas in the mine. If he could locate one of these pockets, he could ignite it to eliminate the ant colony without risking them escaping to the village. Lloyd managed to locate the methane lair and asked Javier to cover for him as he prepared to ignite it. However, their plan was interrupted when they came face to face with the queen of the ants, a massive and terrifying creature. Lloyd asked Javier if he could hold her back, to which Javier replied that he couldn't, but there were things one knew without having to try. Despite their fear, they had no choice but to confront the queen and try to stop her. With his triple circle mana heart, Javier prepared to receive the queen ant's attack. As he braced himself, Lloyd continued digging towards the methane gas layer. When Lloyd finally came into contact with the gas, he noticed it gushing out of the hole he had made. He quickly instructed Javier to run towards the exit, taking the torch with him. The queen ant chased after them as they fled. As they ran far enough away, Lloyd threw the torch towards the methane gas, igniting it. The explosion caused a massive fireball that engulfed the area, including the ant nest. As the fire raged, Javier covered Lloyd to protect him from the worst of the blast. Outside the mine, 
Lord Arcos arrived just as the tremors from the explosion could be felt. Sir Bayern held him back from entering, ensuring his safety. Inside the mine, the explosion had blocked the tunnel with collapsed rocks and debris. Lloyd and Javier were trapped with limited oxygen. The system appeared, notifying Lloyd that his oxygen was running out. Lloyd knew he had to dig a hole to allow oxygen to flow in. Despite the dire situation, he was determined to get them out of there. Javier had passed out, but Lloyd's sense of responsibility drove him to dig towards the exit. Javier woke up briefly and witnessed Lloyd's determination to save them both. This act of selflessness increased Javier's approval rating towards Lloyd, earning him more points. Lloyd then used his remaining points to upgrade his Azrahan core technique, increasing its power and gaining new skills. As Lloyd's oxygen level rapidly depleted, he continued digging, inching closer to creating a hole for oxygen to flow through. With only three meters left to go, Lloyd's oxygen finally ran out and he collapsed, feeling that his life was about to end. However, just when it seemed hopeless, Padong dug his way to Lloyd and delivered the much-needed oxygen. Lloyd gained the strength to dig through the remaining blockage. With Padong's help, they managed to clear the way. As night fell, Lord Arcos ventured deeper into the passage leading to the ant nest, unaware of the events that had unfolded inside the mine. As Lloyd finally reached Javier, carrying him with him, the system notification appeared, praising Lloyd for overcoming his physical limitations in the extreme environment and improvising effectively. This experience had a strong effect on his Asrahan core technique, and he received a reward, the power-saving mode, allowing him to use the technique more efficiently on sunny days. The villagers were deeply moved by Lloyd's heroic actions during the ant colony incident. They praised him for his bravery and for prioritizing the safety of the workers. Even though Lloyd didn't seek recognition, he was receiving admiration from the villagers. 500 RP. A few days later, work resumed in the mine and Lloyd, accompanied by Javier, returned to inspect the progress. The workers greeted their lords with admiration and praises, considering Lloyd a noble who embodied the concept of noblesse oblige. This made Lloyd uncomfortable, as he wasn't used to such attention. After the incident, Lloyd became more focused on safety, meticulously searching for and addressing any potential hazards in the mine tunnels. Javier questioned why Lloyd was personally involved in such dangerous work when he could delegate it to the workers. Lloyd ridiculed the idea, emphasizing that being in charge meant taking the greatest risks and reaping the most rewards. Javier struggled to determine whether Lloyd was a good or bad person, and the system hinted that his approval rating was about to rise, but ultimately didn't. As they reached the end of the tunnel, Lloyd used his laser eyes to inspect the wall, suspecting that there was something hidden behind it. Lloyd began to dig, his hands scraping away at the dirt with determined energy. The ground was tough, but he was driven by curiosity and the promise of discovery. His heart pounded in his chest as he worked, sweat beating on his forehead. He knew there was something hidden behind that wall, and he was determined to find out what it was. As the soil crumbled away beneath his fingers, Lloyd's efforts paid off. He uncovered a hidden cave, and inside, he couldn't believe his eyes. The cave was filled with a treasure trove of food, and in the corner there was an orc, tied up and struggling. Javier, his friend, was trying to draw his sword, a look of determination on his face as if he intended to take care of the orc himself. But Lloyd stopped him, putting a hand on Javier's arm. Hold on, he said, his voice calm but firm. Let's not be reckless here. He looked at the orc, his mind racing. He saw an opportunity, a chance to acquire a valuable asset. Lloyd thought to himself, this orc could be a jackpot, a new addition to my resources. He decided to save the orc much to Javier's surprise and confusion. The next day, the orc had recovered, and he expressed his gratitude to Lloyd for helping him. It was then that he revealed his name, Arash. He explained that he was the son of the chief of the Sand and Steel tribe of orcs. Arash had recovered remarkably quickly thanks to the expert care of the Baron's physician. Arash looked at Lloyd with gratitude in his eyes. I won't forget this act of kindness, he said. He asked Lloyd what he wanted, promising to grant him any request as a token of his appreciation. Lloyd didn't hesitate. He knew exactly what he wanted. I need 120 orc workers for my mine, he said. Arash's face fell, and he shook his head. That's impossible, he said. Lloyd clicked his tongue in frustration. Arash observed him and commented, You look like a bad man. Arash went on to explain that orcs were warriors and they only followed the orders of fellow warriors. Lloyd realized that even if Arash agreed to give him orcs, he wouldn't be able to command them. Then, a memory surfaced in Lloyd's mind. He remembered reading a book about orcs in the wild, and how they had to bring the head of a wild ant for their coming-of-age ceremony. Suddenly, an idea formed in his head. Lloyd said, I'm sorry, Arash, but there's nothing I can do about the orc workers. He congratulated Arash on completing his coming-of-age ceremony, making Arash look downcast. Arash sighed, I didn't even catch a wild ant. He admitted, his voice filled with disappointment. I got paralyzed. It was a failure. Lloyd played dumb, 
feigning surprise. What are you talking about? He asked. He pointed to the head of the queen ant in the cave. We caught the queen together. Lloyd continued to manipulate Arash, spinning a tale of how they had bravely entered the ant nest, describing the queen ant as a pitiful, quivering mass of rags. He claimed that, thanks to Arash's bravery, they had easily defeated the weakened queen ant. Arash's eyes widened, and he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Lloyd further added, So, we caught the wild ant together, Arash, the great warrior. Finally, Lloyd returned to the topic of the 120 orc workers. Arash's face lit up with excitement. You shall have them, he exclaimed. A week from now, in the territory of the Sand and Steel tribe of wild orcs. As they arrived at the Sand and Steel tribe's territory, Arash was greeted by his father, the tribe chief, the reunion was so powerful that it created a wind blast with enormous force. Lloyd watched in amazement, thinking that if he were caught between them, he would be turned to smithereens. He couldn't help but grin wickedly, imagining the incredible productivity of having 120 workers with such strength. Arash proudly presented the head of the queen ant to his tribe, and it brought tears of joy to their eyes. The tribe celebrated by engaging in intense workouts. Lloyd was astonished to see that the orcs used gold treasure as their workout equipment in the tribe hall. Lloyd met with the chief of the tribe, Takash, to discuss his request for 120 worker orcs. At first, Takash refused, and Lloyd was beaten down from the exhausting journey. However, to Lloyd's surprise, they changed their minds. Curious, Lloyd asked Takash for the reason behind their initial refusal. Takash explained that their tribe needed a lot of meat to build up their muscles, so they hunted every day in three shifts. He added that failure to do so would result in muscle loss, which could spell the end of their tribe. Furthermore, the meat spoiled after just one day, leading to muscle loss if consumed. Lloyd offered a solution, a method to store meat so it could last for days without spoiling. Only then would Takash agree to lend the 120 worker orcs, and so, a contract was formed. The tribe would receive a storage unit in their treasure as payment, along with fitness equipment made of stone. Javier, still suspicious, continued to watch Lloyd closely. Lloyd explained that they needed granite, an incredibly strong stone, to build the storage unit. Javier thought about how sturdy that stone must be, and Lloyd briefly considered the absence of dynamite but hinted at an alternative solution. Lloyd changed the topic rapidly, sharing a story from the books about the city of Namran trapped within a powerful, evil magic force field. Thousands of refugees were trapped inside, and Javier, already a swordmaster, was determined to save them. He harnessed his mana circles and created a lethal skill, one mana circle to protect the main mana heart, while the remaining three circles were combined to form a mono blast that destroyed the magical barrier. From then on, the mono blast became one of the Knight of Blood and Iron's signature moves, alongside the Israelian core technique. Lloyd finally turned to Javier and asked if he could do something similar sparking a discussion about the potential of such a technique. Javier couldn't help but be suspicious of Lloyd's knowledge and motives. He asked Lloyd how he knew about such things, to which Lloyd simply brushed it off, saying the thought had just occurred to him. He challenged Javier, asking if his eyes looked like the eyes of a liar. Javier had to admit that they didn't. Lloyd encouraged Javier to give the technique a try, explaining that it would be cool if Javier's swordsmanship evolved. Javier, realizing that Lloyd had an ulterior motive, hesitated. However, he also recognized that if it were possible, it could benefit him as well. So he prepared himself, forming one circle to protect the mana heart, and released the remaining two circles. The blade exploded with power, even causing Lloyd to stumble back. But since it was Javier's first attempt, he ended up exploding himself as well, messing up his clothes and hair in the process. Javier questioned whether Lloyd had anticipated such an outcome, to which Lloyd apologized and admitted that he hadn't. Javier acknowledged that despite his doubts, Lloyd's thinking had proven correct this time. Suddenly, a system message appeared, informing Lloyd that Javier was grateful for the lesson, and his approval rating had increased by three, leaving Javier's approval rating at minus eleven. Javier grumbled, reminding Lloyd that he was a knight trained to protect his master, not to use his sword for construction. Lloyd laughed it off, saying that Javier didn't need to thank him since he was already compensated with AP points. As construction progressed at a lightning pace, with Javier slicing blocks of granite and Podong transporting them, even the orcs eagerly joined in, working like gym addicts without being asked. Lloyd couldn't help but think that they would finish five times faster than planned. However, a new problem arose, finding ice blocks for insulation. Lloyd asked Javier about the five men he had sent out to fetch the insulation, but it had been three weeks, and Lloyd suspected that something had happened to them. He urged Javier to join him in the search, but Javier was reluctant. Fearing for their safety, Lloyd reminded him that he was in charge and responsible for all his workers. Reluctantly, Javier agreed, and they set off to search for the missing men in the barren land. Lloyd eventually spotted a sign of the missing men, a special glove he had made for them, and straw needed for insulation. Javier also noticed an unnatural flow of mana in a nearby canyon, though it was faint and uncertain. Lloyd began to panic, 
and urged Javier to hurry, fearing that their men might already be dead. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out Arara Simp who commented, Power to control probabilities on our unordinary video. Thanks for commenting. They followed more signs, leading them to a cave that Lloyd recognized as Lupelin's Dungeon, a place from the book. Lloyd explained that in the story, Javier had gone to the dungeon early, and it had been the secret hideout of a dark sorcerer named Lupelin. Lloyd's anger surged as he realized that Lupelin had dared to lay a hand on his property, seeing it as a violation of his property rights. He thought that even the death penalty would be too generous for Lupelin. However, Javier abruptly entered the cave, urging Lloyd to follow. As they ventured deeper into the cave, Javier triggered a trap spell with his foot, narrowly avoiding injury thanks to Lloyd's quick reflexes. Lloyd mocked Javier, questioning his credentials as a knight and reminding him that he should have anticipated traps. He explained that in the book, Javier had fallen into the first trap and entered the dungeon covered in wounds. But now Javier needed to be more attuned to the unnatural flow of mana in the area. Lloyd instructed Javier to focus and be in tune with the feeling of the place. Javier began to sense that where a booby trap was planted, there would be an unnatural cluster of mana. With this newfound knowledge, Javier led the way deeper into the cave. Javier couldn't help but wonder how Lloyd always avoided giving a straight answer with lies. He was certain that Lloyd knew exactly what was happening and what would happen in the future, but he couldn't figure out how Lloyd did it. There was no significant mana or special energy emanating from Lloyd, leaving Javier puzzled. Nevertheless, he decided to focus on the task at hand, rescuing the soldiers inside the dungeon. Inside the dungeon, Lupelin noticed that one of his booby traps had been triggered but didn't mind. Assuming that the intruders were dead, he proceeded to finish his preparations, planning to open the door to the room where he had detained the soldiers. Lupelin hoped that this time, his spell would succeed. He grabbed one of the soldiers and threw him into a spell inscribed on the floor, muttering about a pentacle connected to the underworld and a sickle soaked in blood for 100 days. As he performed his ritual, Lloyd and Javier entered the dungeon. Lloyd shouted at Lupelin not to touch his stuff and threatened him. Lupelin cast a spell that triggered the door to close, but Lloyd knew what was coming. He held his breath inside while Lupelin assumed it was sleeping gas that could knock out an elephant. Lloyd activated his energizer for 10 minutes, allowing him to breathe less and started digging beneath the gate that blocked their path. He thought about how Javier had tried every insomnia remedy available, rendering him immune to all forms of sleeping medication. Meanwhile, Javier found Lloyd's digging rather ridiculous, planning to mock him about it later. Lloyd instructed Javier to blast the rest of the way to the dungeon, and with a mono blast, they created an opening to the dungeon room. Surprising Lupelin, Lloyd obnoxiously emerged from the hole, joking about Lupelin never having seen an entrance like that. Taken aback, Lupelin cast his magic into the ground, summoning a ghoul, explaining that he kept failing his reincarnation spells. After creating an extremely strong ghoul as a product, Lupelin assumed that there was no way Lloyd and Javier could even scratch its steely skin. Lloyd, however, quickly assessed the situation and informed Javier of the ghoul's weakness in its legs. Without waiting for Lloyd to finish, Javier jumped into the air, using a mono blast to create a new attack called Mono Blast Slash, which split the ghoul in two. Lupelin was left surprised and unable to react. Lloyd couldn't help but be somewhat taken aback by Javier's improvised move, as it wasn't mentioned in the book. Still, he brushed it off and approached Lupelin, who looked terrified, fearing for his life. Lloyd scolded Lupelin, explaining that he had set his construction project back by weeks by abducting his men. He demanded to know how Lupelin planned to make up for it. Lupelin apologized, realizing that he needed to get out of the situation alive, but Lloyd showed little interest in his apologies. He wanted compensation. Lupelin mentioned that his cave was full of valuable tools for sorcery, and he offered to give Lloyd everything in it. Lloyd smiled maliciously, making sure Lupelin understood that everything in the cave now belonged to him. Meanwhile, Javier checked on the rescued soldiers and confirmed that they were worn out, but otherwise fine. Lloyd questioned Lupelin about his intentions, wondering what he had planned for the soldiers during the days they were imprisoned. Lupelin admitted that he had been researching how to bring back the dead. Lloyd scolded him, saying that such a feat was impossible. He asked Lupelin what he would do if he could bring back the dead. Lupelin revealed that he wanted to bring back his dead wife and child. He explained that he had worked as a sorcerer in his lord's castle, leading a seemingly ordinary and happy life until his lord tried to steal his wife. Lupelin planned to run away with his family. Lloyd stopped Lupelin's story and scolded him again, questioning his motives in trying to bring back his family. He asked if Lupelin expected his wife and child to thank him for killing hundreds of innocent people to achieve that goal. Lupelin tried to retaliate, but Lloyd continued his scolding, making it clear that no matter how Lupelin spun it, he had crushed the happiness of others and become a serial murderer. In the end, Lloyd told Lupelin that he would return with his men to retrieve the tools from the cave. 
He warned Lapellan that if he dared to hurt anyone again, there would be no mercy. Lapellan felt grateful for being pardoned from his sins. Lloyd walked away, fully aware that Lupellan would try to attack him. He looked back at Lupellan with a death stare, emphasizing that there would be no mercy now. Javier swiftly beheaded Lupellan, putting an end to any potential problems in the future. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.